Hello folks, welcome to the next episode of Differential Equations. I'm your host Rifat Bari, Harvard Exoplanet Researcher, Perfect ACT Scorer, and I'm broadcasting live from the City College of New York where I'm a physics student and I have a perfect 4.0 GPA. Today we're going to be discussing line integrals. Now line integrals are more a part of vector calculus, you may argue, but there is an amazing relationship between line integrals and exact differential equations. And we're going to investigate that relationship in this episode of differential equations. So to understand line integrals, we have to start from a very basic physical concept. And that's the idea of work. So what is work and why do we need this idea? Let's say you have an object, could be any object, something like this bottle perhaps. And this object is on a surface and I exert some force on this object. Now, not all forces are exerted equal. If I exert a force vertically like this, is the box moving? No, it seems like my force is basically useless. But if I exert a force horizontally, well, the box certainly did move that time. So my force was not useless. So work is a way of telling us how effective, how useful is a force for changing the way an object moves. So since work is so critical, since it is so intertwined with force, you'd imagine that work is proportional to force, right? So if you have a box on a table, much like the bottle on my hand, if I exert a small force, then you can imagine if I exert a larger force, I'll have a greater amount of work. Here's a small F, here's a big F. Here's a small work, here's a big work, right? It makes sense that work should be proportional to the force exerted. But you have to think about something else. How long does that force last? Obviously, if I have something like this bottle and I exert a force on it for a, a short time or a short distance, that's not exerting as much work as if I exert a force over a longer distance, right? So work should not only be proportional to force, should also be proportional to distance. And hence, we get the first basic way to describe work, which is force times distance. This is the classic formula of work that most first year physics students encounter. But we're gonna mess this up a little bit. What if we don't have such a simple scenario? In fact, I'm going to erase it right here. What if instead of exerting a force horizontally or vertically, we exert the force at an angle? So here's our table, here's our box, and we're going to exert the force at an angle, maybe something like this. And so this force vector has a horizontal and a vertical component. The question is, which component of the force vector is useful in changing the motion of the box? Is it the horizontal component or the vertical component? Think about it. This force vector F can be decomposed into F sub X and F sub Y. Which one will change the direction of the box's movement? Which one will move the box at all? F sub X or F sub Y? To answer that question, instead of thinking of exerting one force at an angle, think about exerting two different forces, one horizontally, left to right, and one vertically, up and down. Which one will move the box along the table? It's F sub X, right? It's this. And what is F sub X in terms of F? Well, call this angle theta. So F sub X is simply F cosine theta. But work we know is not just proportional to the effective force, it's also proportional to the distance. So we're gonna multiply this by distance to get the work done. So work is basically force dot distance, the dot product of the force and the distance, which is another way to write F D cosine theta. Now, that's one version of how work can be defined, but that's if the force is constant throughout the distance you exert the work. What if the force isn't constant? In fact, what if the force depends on where the box is? Now you might think, what kind of a cynical teacher would assign that kind of homework problem? But be not afraid at all. 
because that's not just a homework problem, that's real life. In fact, the gravitational pull due to the Earth is a constantly changing amount of work because the force depends on where your location is, right? The potential energy depends on your height above the surface of the Earth. And so we have to find the gravitational potential energy not using just MGH. We can't use that anymore. No, 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 because the force is not constant, right? Instead, we have to use a varying force. And so when force is varying, what can you do? You can integrate, right? You can integrate. And that's what I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you why work is simply the integral of F dr, f dot dr. A little bit of force evaluated at what point you are in a, in a path, let's call it c, dotted with a little step you take along that path. Let me make that concrete. Let's say I'm trying to go from point A to point B. Let's say I'm trying to go from CCNY to the halal store to buy some lunch. So I start from here. That's my starting point, that's CCNY. And I go over here. That's the halal food store. And I can take any number of paths, but let's just say I choose a random path. Okay, so that's a path that I took to the halal food store. Now, <clears throat> this path, we're gonna call it C. Based on the path that I take, I'm gonna have different amount of work exerted on me, right? Because I'm walking to the halal food store and there is wind, okay, there is wind. There's a crazy amount of wind going on outside. As you can see, my location on curve C is going to influence how much force is exerted on me by the wind. For example, if I'm near the starting point, which is CCNY, if I'm near here, for example, if I'm right here, what do you see? You see that a lot of the wind vectors are pointed against me. I'm in an uphill battle, right? The wind is trying to go against me, right? I'm trying to go this way. I'm trying to go this way to the halal food store, but the wind is coming against me. So negative work is done. The wind is hurting me. It's not helping me get to the halal food store. In fact, it's hurting me. But then look around here. Around here, the wind is actually guiding me to the halal food store. It's helping me. It's speeding me up. Positive work is done. And so what this integral right here, f dot dr, is going to do is it's going to evaluate. It's going to evaluate the force at every single point along this curve C. And it's going to find how much of that force vector is effective in changing my direction. So, for example, uh, let's say I'm, this is a little bit clouded here, let's come over here to the top. So let's say, once again, I'm going from CCNY to the Halal Food Store, a very practical situation indeed that I have to encounter every day, and there's a lot of wind. Okay, so there we go. So let's say I'm at a point, I'll, I'll say a word here, right here, call that point P. And at that point, I'm trying to figure out how much work the wind has done on me. If I take a little step, so I take a little step from P to P prime, how much work has the wind done on me? Has it helped me? Has it hurt me? How much? Well, first of all, it depends on the distance I traveled, right? Let's call that distance dr a little bit of distance dr. And at this point, there's gotta be a force, right? The wind is exerting a force. Let's say the wind is pointing, I don't know, let's say the wind is pointing that way. We'll call that the force of the wind. Now, the effective component of that force is going to be whatever component lies along the tangent vector of where I'm heading. So I'm going to take f cosine theta to find what component of the force, how much of the force is effective, is useful in changing my motion. And so I have F cosine theta 
times dr. And that's where this formula f dot dr comes from for work. Okay, so now we have a general idea of how the work formula comes about. I'm gonna show you some different ways to write this formula. And in the next episode, I'm gonna show you from basic fundamental first principles, how to derive the line integral formula from work. But that's in the next episode. Now let me show you different ways to write the work, the integral formulation for work. So let me get the eraser. Okay, so we saw that one way to express the idea of work, the most basic way is FD. So work, work is FD. And we can apply this formula in situations where the force is directly in the direction, in the direction of the way that our box or our particle is moving. So this can only be applied in situations where you have a box and the force is perfectly along the axis of the box's movement. Then we came up with the next, we added a kind of complication, right? We said that what if the force is not in the direction of the box's movement? Well, then you gotta use the dot product. So basically, that adds in a kind of cosine theta. And this cosine theta basically tells you if the work is helping or hurting your movement. If it's helping your movement, the work will be positive. Otherwise, negative. And all of that is controlled by this guy, cosine theta. Cosine theta between zero and 90 is positive, right? All students take calculus. So when the angle between your force vector and your tangent vector is less than 90 degrees, when it's acute, the work is gonna be positive. Otherwise, negative. So that's the next complication we added to the work formula. Then we asked, what if the force isn't constant? What if the force is varying as you move along your path? Well then, we need an integral formulation, right? To add up all the different force vectors and all the different components of the force vectors that are effective in moving your particle. So then we have this integral formulation F dot dr. But in reality, this integral formulation isn't really useful only if you're trying to write this formula simply, elegantly on the board, it's useful. But if you're trying to actually calculate how much work is done, this doesn't have much practicality. So we gotta adjust this formula a bit. Let's say we wanna calculate the force at some point uh, M, right? So that M, that point M is going to be represented by a position vector, R of T. So basically we're evaluating the force, we're evaluating the force, which is a vector, at a certain position vector, r of t. That's what we have right here. And dr, I can rewrite dr as what? dr can be rewritten as dr dt dt. dr dt, that should look familiar. That's just r prime of t, velocity, right? And it makes sense. Depending on how you're moving, that's a change how much work is being done on you. And then we dot it with r prime of t. What is r prime of t? Well, I can rewrite r prime of t as dx dt, dy dt, and then multiply all of this by dt to appease Leibniz. So this is really the practical formula for work that, that, um, that we'll be using, right? You evaluate the force field at some position, and you dot that, when you dot it, well, you wanna know how much of that force is effective. You can't just blindly multiply it. No, 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 and that doesn't even make sense. How do you multiply two vectors? You have to take the dot product to find out how much of the force is effective in moving you, moving your particle. And of course, all of that depends on where you're moving, right? How are you moving? Where is your tangent vector? That's what this determines, this part of, of the formula. So the force field, is it helping or hurting you? And to figure out which component of the force field is actually effective in moving you, we take the dot product, and then which way are you moving? We, we use this velocity vector right here, dx dt, dy dt. All of this multiplied by dt. So this is one way to write the integral formulation for the work formula. Another way that you might often see it is the force field 
dotted with dr. And if we write the force field as m comma n, as a vector function, then this will end up, hopefully you'll see, you'll be able to see what I write, as m dx plus m dy. And that's just another way to write this same thing. It's just another formulation of the work, the work integral formulation. All right, folks, hopefully this was an enjoyable lesson. Hopefully you learned as much as I did about work and how that's connected to exact differential equations, hint, hint, because this should look very familiar, right? If you take the partial with respect to y of that m component and the partial with respect to x of that n term, and if they're equal, well, then there's a conservative field. All right, we'll check that out in the next episode. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Ambition plus MKO plus scaffolding equal learning. We believe anyone can learn anything. That's why our motto is memorization is a crime. And that's why we partnered with Brilliant. Brilliant transforms math and science into hands-on activities so that you too can understand everything from first grade math to E equals MC squared. Barry Science Lab and Brilliant is your MKO and will give you the scaffolding to expand your ZPD until you become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. Visit brilliant.org slash Barry Science Lab today. The first 50 of you to use that link will get a 20% discount on the Brilliant annual subscription. Don't, Don't forget, forget that, that you too can, can become, become the, the next Einstein. Einstein. So, so let's, let's fall in love with math and science. science.